Greetings everyone, this is Umbi and we're back with another week of the VGC Draft League here in week three and our opponent is Eltrim24 uh, the guy with the fearsome Dondozo Tatsugiri team that we uh, talked about in our analysis um, so far they're 0 and 2 so we're hoping to keep that trend along unfortunately um, definitely unfortunate for my analysis where I ranked their squad as the, the number one team in this group but uh, we have to do what we gotta do so we're approaching this from the main angle of addressing the Dondozo, no matter what route we go. Um, so Gastrodon's going to be you know, a star player here, so is Tropius, and got a few other tricks up the sleeve that we'll go to in just a little bit. But um, just to, you know, as a reminder, Dondozo and Tatsugiri are not the only things to be worried about in the team. Uh, Sylveon here is one of the probably the heaviest hitter actually the heaviest hitter outside of um, a boosted Don Dozo here so I have to make sure that I'm prepped for whatever it can do um, and of course um, Talonflame um, activating Tailwind to uh, grab speed control because overall my team um, is a little bit faster um, but you know it's nothing that they can't overcome with you know the commander activating on Don Dozo and a, and a quick Tailwind for their team um, I'm also not necessarily worried, but I want to keep, I want to be mindful about Gotharita as well. Um, it's not the hugest threat to my team, but just the ability to allow my opponent to reposition the way they want to based on my lead, I think is pretty powerful as, you know, as well as having the fake out. Um, by virtue of me having Goldingo though, that might be a lower priority since Goldingo gets to both avoid fake out and escape the, the shadow tag. Now, as um, last thing, before we get into the uh, squad that I chose, um, I did trade out Mabasta for Halucha. Mabasta was meant to be a bulky intimidate user slash snarl user um, to slow down teams. However, like its stats are just not impressive for the role that I envisioned it for, um, nor is its move pool, um, if I'm being honest. Um, so I just wasn't bringing it to matches. So I figured I'd go ahead and drop it and pick up Halucha, which has you know a specific use case for this match. Um, so we'll actually talk about it first. Um, you see here with the safety goggles, um, Terra Ghost, and a few interesting moves here. Um, so the safety goggles just to you know, synergize with the, the rest of the team. You see it's mostly immune to the sandstorm that I'm setting up with Hippowdon. Um, But also, if they decide to bring uh, Vivalon, I don't want the Rage Powder or Spore messing up what I'm trying to synergize Holucha with. Um, and number one on the list is Gold Bingo. Um, when dealing with the uh, Don Dozo, if I nasty plot with Gold, um, Gold Dingo, obviously the unaware ability is gonna you know, make sure it doesn't care about what I throw at it, right? Um, however, with Halucha, I can use Entrainment on Gold Dingo. Normally the good is gold ability shuts down the Entrainment. However, Halucha, as you can see, has Mold Breaker. Um, and then it's in using Entrainment to give Mold Breaker to Gold Dingo which would then bypass the unaware um, with any boost that I may have used to you know, get Golden go up to speed, so to speak. All right, so that was just kind of, it was a, a really cheeky type of strategy that I, that I cooked up. I was hoping you know, I can make use of it. Um, so we'll see what happens there. And then uh, Feather Dance is also to slow down Don Dozo. Um, Don Dozo being so slow would have to go max speed in a jolly nature in order to outrun Halucha, it's actually blazingly fast, surprisingly. Um, so I figured, okay, I just go ahead and max speed, jolly, feather dance, that slows it down a little bit as well. This is a backup plan. Um, flying press just for general damage, not really looking for it to do a ton of damage, but it's there. And then lastly, quick guard. Um, that was also, like I mentioned, I wanted to keep Gotharita in mind that helps um, against the fake out, um, depending on you know, what I try to lead here, all right? Um, now, moving on to the actual star of the show, Gastrodon, Air Balloon, Terra Fairy. Um, so, Don Dozo's most common moves, Order Up, Wave Crash, and Earthquake. With all three of these, um, in, with, with the Air Balloon, Storm Drain, and Terra Fairy in place, I get to be immune to all of them. So, um, the hope is that I get the Don Dozo into, um, and Tatsugiri, you know, to, to come in. Um, and even if it's, it's the last Pokemon, uh, even if Gastron's the last Pokemon, it gets to 1v1 it, you know, simply for free. 
Um, I can clear smog away the uh, the stat boost from Commander. Um, eventually, Earth Power get a uh, special defense drop, and uh, eventually just grab the KO. Even once Topsigiri is down in the field by itself, um, it can't do too much to the Gastrodon either. The Terra Fairy makes it immune to the Draco Meteor. The Storm Drain makes it immune to the Muddy Water. Uh, all it has left to really attack me with um, is Icy Wind. Uh, for the most part or at least that's that's the expectation all they have really is is the icy wind um so I'm, I'm hopeful that that one is going to bear fruit we'll see um hippowdon lichen rock um the sand rush duo i thought would be pretty good into the team it, if they brought talon flame it makes it essentially to where i don't care too much that they set up the tailwind because lichen rock will still be faster than most everything on the field once it has its own speed boost versus their um tailwind speed um, it's also another way of you know, semi dealing with uh, Don Dozo once it's in place. Um, with the and Endeavor strats are there are, are not anything new. Um, so if it does decide it wants to target the Lycan Rock and bring it down to um, bring it down to Sash, I get a free Endeavor and a free KO um, from the uh, from the Sand Chip damage. Um, as far as Hippowdon, I decided to give it a, a smooth rock. Um, by the time I finished with the rest of the team, there weren't really too many items that I wanted to give to um, give to it that weren't in use already. Um, leftovers on Goldingo because I wanted to make it a little bit bulky, um, just to help it help it better resist, um, particularly Sylveon if it decided to go Terra uh, Fire. Um, but also if I decide I want to uh, Terra Water with Goldingo, it helps me um, buffer a little bit of the Hyper Voice damage. But um, again. Hippowdon's item, Smooth Rock, um, gets extra chip damage as the Sand Stream uh, lasts longer. Um, but it, it's really just there for that purpose alone to set um, Sand onto the field for Lycan Rock if I need it. Um, Terra Grass, also a little bit of a buffer for the Don Dozo, so I get to resist both um, Wave Crash and Earthquake. And last but not least, Tropius is also expected to do pretty well into Don Dozo. Um, it's pretty bulky. You can see I've got the bold nature on 212 defense. If harvest activates, I get you know, a ton of recovery from um, the citrus berries activating. And of course, leech seed um, being active on Don Dozo because its HP stat is ridiculous. We get a ton of healing from that as well. So it's just going to be a stall bot through citrus berry harvest, giga drain, and leech seed um, while taking minimal damage overall. Um, so like the, it's, it's, it's already resistant to the wave crash. It's immune to earthquake. Um, the only thing I have to worry about is damage from the order up in that case, um, typically. Um, so we also have Terra Steel on it, which would help it uh, to resist the, the initial order up. And then we have Wide Guard on the, on the back end. So once we do Terra Steel, once we have the Leap Seed set down, um, if it does want to use earthquake, then we just get to spam Wide Guard and we're, and we're perfectly safe. Um, so yeah, I think I've insulated pretty well into the team overall, or at least into Don Dozo overall, while still keeping options open for offense into Eltrim's team. We'll just have to see how it pans out. All right, so we've got game number one here, and this set's going to be really interesting, trust me. Um, and we got some interesting options here from Eltrim's uh, side here. Don Dozo Tatsugiri is expected, Sylveon expected, but three new players on the back end of their draft, Cloyster, Skuntank, and Luminion. Um, so let's just go ahead and get right into this. I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything by what's going on here because game one, I don't expect anything that happens. They lead off with Don Dozo. Uh, makes it easy for them to just slot in Tatsugiri and trip me up if they want to. And they also lead Skun Tank. I'm trying to figure out what it's doing here. They immediately go for a Sucker Punch, bring me down to 5% health. Kind of glad I invested in the bulk there to kind of survive it. I go ahead and use, uh, use Rock Slide, not really afraid of the Wave Crash, or in this case, Liquidation. They want to save some health here, which brings me down to Sash. But now I'm in Sucker Punch range, so I can't re readily attack here. Um, as scenes as they go for the Sucker Punch here. Um, I'm kind of forced to uh, attack with both Pokemon, so I lose Lock and Rock for that. Do a ton of damage into Dot Dozo, but Skun Tank is still at large. Now, I am heavily on the back foot here. Only two Pokemon versus a full four. All I've got is Hippowdon and Gastrodon to try and salvage this. But that's a really tough ask. Um, as I go ahead and bring in the Topsigiri to beef up the Don Dozo. Um, now, keep in mind, I still do have the, the technology with the, um, the Gastrodon. They don't, even, they don't even want to worry about it. They just bring in Sylveon to go ahead and clean up here. 
Um, since I can't resist it with either of the terrors that I have here, I'm not even gonna uh, bother with that. I'm just gonna try and stall a little bit, do as much damage as I can, but without enough damage into the Sylveon, it's pretty much a lost cause. Um, so Gastrodon gets the air balloon popped. Hyper Voice going into the Gastrodon does half of the half of my health. I'm already chipped out a little bit. Clear Smog, I was um, trying to scout out for the Throat Spray here um, just to get some information for the, uh, the next game, but um, they are already revealing Life Orb Chip, so no, nothing to worry about there. Still, again, just gonna fight it out, see if I can get some damage down here. Uh, maybe if I pick up the knockout onto the Sylveon, I might I might stand a chance, get a chance to recover with the other Gastrodon. Um, I also go for, actually what I do is go, I go for the Rock Tomb here, not paying attention to the fact that I'm already Icy Winded. So any Rock, um, any speed drops in there and they're not going to matter and they can still continue to Icy Wind me here. Um, they're pretty safe to just clean up game number one uh, pretty efficiently. So um, already I'm tripped up. The Sucker Punch from the Skun Tank throws everything out of whack. Um, I kind of left my Lycan Rock exposed. Um, so now it's under threat of getting KO'd by the Sucker Punch. I have to kind of flip a coin um, and guess what it's going to do. Um, though technically if I can look back at the match, that might have been a, a knee jerk reaction. I could always switch out there. We know what Sucker Punch is coming. Um, so the main thing I just have to do is uh, get Gastron into play. That might help absorb the uh, the liquidation from the um, from the Don Dozo, and I can kind of play out the turns. If I get Skun Tank off of the field, then I stand a chance to come back in later on with perhaps Lycan Rock, uh, click Endeavor, and then pick up a KO from there. Um, but we move on to game number two. We make some adjustments with the uh, Skun Tank in mind. I think that's going to be um, a heavy player because I, ideally I do want to get Goldingo into place to kind of get the ball rolling, but we've got to make an adjustment to make sure that we don't get uh, screwed over like that again. Um, so they go ahead and go with the same lead here. And this time I just go ahead and rock the, um, the sand duo. Um, I recognize that you know, Don Dozo might go for an attack here. So I bring in the, the Gastron hoping to get a, you know, a plus one. Um, instead they go for an earthquake. Um, fortunately I was stomping tantrum uh, the Skun Tank and they earthquake it, you know, to send it to its doom. Uh, Hepaton's on a little bit of life support here, but next to the uh, the Gastrodon, who gets a chance to show off the tech, um, I get to survive, thanks to his, my great defense and HP stat. Uh, slack off, recover the damage, and now Gastrodon gets to take control of the game. We cleared out the uh, stat boost through clear smog. Hepaton gets to recover up through slack off, and it's just normal poison, so we're not worried about, it's not toxic damage, so we can continue to uh, to do this over and over again. Um, we are going to do some repositioning though. Tropius comes in. We get, we're get we going to get some Leech Seed recovery uh, going. We, we, we definitely just want to be in position to catch the Tatsugiri after the Don Dozo is gone. But as you can see, Gastrodon in great position. You know, the technology we came up with is working perfectly. Um, I guess they want to speed up the game, so they go ahead and give me a, a special attack boost, uh, activating the Storm Drain there. Um, and also gonna you know, protect Leech Seed's doing its job. So we are all good here. Just stalling out until we can get the correct position, cover some health with Gastrodon, no big deal. Uh, we finished off Don Dozo and we launched an Earth Power into Tatsugiri, almost taking it out. I wish it had taken it out immediately right there. Would have saved me um, a little bit of, uh, of anxiety here. Um, but with Wide Guard also coming in clutch through the Tropius, we get to stop out the Icy Wind and Hyper Voice. They don't have much of a recourse here. Um, Sandstream does go down, but we can take care of the tops of Geary later. As long as we spam Wide Guard, seems like they're locked into Icy Wind, so that's fine. The Shadow Ball coming out from Sylveon, not doing a ton of damage into my Tropius, and we hasn't even activated the uh, Citrus Berry yet. So we can just keep you know, attacking into the Sylveon and pick up the KO eventually getting our recovery. And then we finally finish off the tops of Geary. Game is locked. So two star players, are working out perfectly here um, in the mid to late game versus this team. So I'm feeling pretty good going into game three. Here's where all the, well, here's where some of the weirdness happens here. Um, they lead off Luminion and Skun Tank this time. I go for Hal Halucha and Goldingo. Um, so here's the, uh, here, here's the first thing that's a little bit awkward after some further review here. I reveal Quick Guard at this point my opponent doesn't know that I have quick guard. Um, I, this is meant to stop the sucker punch from activating. 
I used Nasty Plot, which would have avoided the Sucker Punch either way. If it was my goal to use the Quick Guard, I would have used another move first, and then uh, while using Nasty Plot with um, Goldingo, and then Quick Guard afterwards. So that play in particular didn't really make sense. Um, now, I, I respect the adjustment from Eltrim here. They wanted to make sure the Sucker Punch KOs this time, um, so they go for a helping hand on Luminion to try and secure that. Um, but unfortunately, I show my hand um, early and show that you know the Sucker Punch from, from Skun Tank is not going to work out, right? So what they end up doing is uh, switching out into Sylveon. Um, I protect because I still don't know what item is on the Skun Tank just yet. Um, and for the trouble, they get off a free Rain Dance and a free Tailwind. Um, you know, I'm just kind of caught off guard, not sure what's particularly doing. Um, I fire off a make it rain while I can. And here is mistake, well, next turn, I believe. Mistake number two is coming up pretty soon here. Um, I don't mind that the Halucha is gone down here. Um, that's fine. I do want to uh, kind of reposition a little bit um, into my Tropius. Here is where the second mistake is, is going to come up. I let my Goldingo fall down to the Helping Hand Shadow Ball here. Um, I could have Terrid, and that was actually part of, you know, some of my lines if um the sylveon is in place and it has you know some way of dealing with goldingo whether that's something like terra fire um terra blast in the goldingo you know my course of action was to uh terra in front of it and then you know go ahead and use make it rain as, as i was planning to um for some reason here i was concerned that they were um, that they might terra fire to resist the make it rain and try and you know maximize damage into the tropius perhaps so i click wide guard um, but for some reason did not Terra the Gold Dingo to try and resist the only move that they could use, um, or at least that I was aware of at the time, um, being Shadow Ball. So they get uh, a free KO right there, and I have to kind of um, scrap my way back into a decent position. Um, we're going to try and use Gastrodon um, to that effect. They're continuing their rampage of Helping Hand Shadow Ball and get rid of my Air Balloon. I'm just gonna finish off the Luminion here so they don't have um, access to Helping Hand anymore. And we get some extra recovery into um, the Tropius here. Now, here's where I start to claw my way back. I've reserved Terra Steel on Tropius, which works perfectly against the Icicle Spear that Cloyster launched um, into it. And it's also gonna help to resist the um, Hyper Voice if they choose to go for that. Um, unfortunately, Tropius special attack not the greatest so even with Coyster's special defense being so low um the giga drain is not enough to ko it so i have to take an extra turn to to get rid of it fortunately i get the double protect on my gastrodon to reserve its health otherwise i believe it goes down there um this is part of the end game that's a, again it's gonna be weird like I, I make some questionable decisions here so i get the recovery on gastrodon everything looks pretty tied up here all i gotta do is get rid of sylveon and skun tank they, I decided to Leech Seed to avoid the, um, the Sucker Punch because I'm still not aware of what item it has. Now, I've got both Pokemon Leech Seeded here. Um, now, the pro there is a problem with that last turn. I am not aware at this point that Leech Seed, even once placed, does not drain if the Pokemon that Leech Seeded is gone. Um, or at least there's no Pokemon in, the, in that slot. So I'm here thinking, okay, Sylveon's gonna go down to Leech Seed. I can just protect. It's gone and I just get to 1v1 the uh, the Skun Tank, right? Um, but no, th that's not how it works. They're just simply not leased because there's nothing in the slot that leeched them. Um, so part number two, if we take a look at the team here, you see that I have like some speed EVs invested into the Tropius. Um, we can even see the Tropius moving ahead of Sylveon in some of the previous turns. It was specifically EV'd so that versus a minimum speed Sylveon, it would outrun it. All I simply needed to do was finish it off with Air Slash. Um, not sure what was going through my head there, but that that definitely cost me the game there. Um, and they get to double up with Hyper Voice, doing a ton of damage of health. Um, and then I lose to Skuntank, who my Gastrodon had a shot to you know, just clear with um, with uh, Earth Power. Not sure why I clicked Clear Smog there either. Nothing makes sense about these last few turns. So um, GG's to my opponent. I don't want to take anything away from you know, their effort um, in, in getting this win. Um, I also feel pretty good that you know the, the ideas that I came up with actually showed their worth throughout the course of the match despite the result. 
um but yeah definitely good prep overall to my opponent i believe but definitely threw some monkey wrenches into the plan um definitely prepped heavily into uh, my gold dingo as well like they were kind enough to share their team with me so we can see some of the ideas that they had too um don dozo um pretty standard set the the bulldoze i'm informed was supposed to be um body press um so this one was a little bit of a, of a mistake before you know, the match started unfortunate um there's a choice scarf tatsugiri with a terra dark terra blast i assume also a way to try and get rid of gold dingo pretty quickly i can see the sylveon no nothing new here life orb uh three uh three attacks with um the terra fire and terra blast um and then shadow ball just to because because it's using rain dance on the luminion um with the um, with the swift swim you can use um the shadow ball as an alternate way to hit the gold dingo uh, without the reduced damage on the um the terra fire uh, terra blast right um cloister i suspected this was going to be shell smash so i didn't want to waste time you know, not hitting it um when i did um and it has a the, the skill link ability as well so if any of my pokemon took a non-resisted icicle spear the their their life is over um skun tank didn't find didn't realize until after the match it was choice banned um so if i if i did realize that and probably could have read to based on you know the switch pattern when they saw that i had a uh, quick guard on the um on the halucha and and probably from the damage that it was doing because skun tanks stats aren't particularly that high so for sucker punch to have been doing that much damage especially as it's not a stab move for it um i probably should have you know expected that there was some there was something going on whether, whether it's choice band or uh, black belt extra belt something was going on to boost the damage of that um and then the, once again finally the luminion with rain dance and damp rock that one uh that one i'm a little bit lost on um, the Helping Hand and Tailwind definitely played their part in uh, Sylveon doing as well as it did in that final game. Um, but as far as the, like the, the general game plan outside of that, um, not not particularly sure. I guess just another way to use Tailwind uh, outside of Talonflame uh, that makes sense. Um, Luminion actually is surprisingly fast at base 91 speed. Um, helps it to get Tailwind against um, uh, Tailwind against um, most of my Pokemon pretty safely. Um, actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, it is a way to get rid of uh, the sand that I might set up. So it, it still has to deal with uh, the, the Lycan Rock firing off a rock slide first, um, but it does help to clear out this, um, any sand chip um, just versus hip out on in, in general. So if it can survive that, um, that initial rock slide, which it should, you can see there's heavy HP investment in here. Um, then it gets the rain dance out for free, and now I have to cycle out hip out on just to you know, get it back up, if if I really need to. Um, but yeah, that being said, I didn't necessarily need sand. I was hoping that I could grab like an endeavor um, plus sand ship uh, KO um, at some point, but that never came to fruition. So you can even see in game three, I opted not to go uh, with setting up sand for that particular game. Um, so yeah. yeah can't be too mad about this game you know i made my own decisions and made my own mistakes um there were silly mistakes even for in the moment but uh we got to hold that l and just move on to the next week um speaking of next week we are going to be up against someone who is gonna come at me with a vengeance we're gonna be up against tree dolphin uh probably is still a bit upset that i ranked their team number eight in this um number eight on my list um from the initial analysis for our group uh so we'll have to see if, you know if they've got anything for me in any tricks up their sleeve to try and shut me down um hopefully looking for you know a four row uh, a four row in both games but we'll see uh anyway that's all i have for today if you enjoyed this type of co uh, content just leave me a like leave me a comment don't even have to subscribe all i all i ask for is feedback but i will see you in the next video take care